Let's look at the manual alignment process within Artec Studio. I have Artec Studio 11 open here. I'm going to come over to my workspace and select or activate the three scans that I want to align. And then I'm going to come over to the left hand side of the screen and click the align tab. And we are now within the manual alignment screen. So in the, uh, in the window here where you have your 3D data, you can just navigate, zoom in, rotate the model, just like you uh, normally would outside of the manual alignment screen. You can double click anywhere on your model and that will change the rotation point. I don't know if you can see that, but it puts a little red dot wherever you double click. That can be helpful when you're working with uh, both registered and unregistered data, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so first of all, when you come into the manual alignment screen, one of these scans, the first scan, will be marked as registered. That means it's going to stay exactly where it is, no matter what you do with the other scans. Everything else is going to be aligned to that scan. You could have more than one scan registered. Let's say that you've aligned things before and then you've left the alignment screen, went back, scanned a little bit more, added some more data, and then you come back and maybe you've already aligned scan one and scan two. You could just right click, mark scan two as registered. In this case, I'm not lined up, but if I had already gone through that process, mark everything you've already aligned as registered and you'll be good to go. That way you don't have to go back through the process each time. Um, so a quick shortcut to mark things registered and unregistered would be to double click. That marks it as registered, double click it again, and it marks it as unregistered. So it may be that you don't want to align everything to scan one or whatever the first scan in the list is. Um, maybe you want to align everything to, let's say, scan three in this case. So I can just come down here either right click, say mark is registered, and that'll register it, meaning everything else will be aligned to scan three now. Or of course, you can double click again, just to toggle. But I do wanna use scan one for registering, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, the manual alignment process involves your registered scan and an unregistered scan, which you, then, you can click down here and when it's unregistered, it shows up as green over here. It's not bold. And when I click over here in my scan data window, notice everything's moving together. But if I hold shift, all of my movement applies only to the unregistered scan data. And again, this is where double clicking can be helpful. If you double click on your model, that'll change your rotation point and make things a little easier. Because what you want to do with manual alignment is visually line them up. I like to put them side by side so I can see common points. And then you can click points within each um, scan. Now, something else to keep in mind, let's say you lost tracking during scanning and you have multiple scans that are lined up. In order to not have to go through the alignment process individually, you can actually come over here and select multiple unregistered scans to move around all at once. So if I come over here to my scan list and hold the control key and click on another scan, it adds it. And now when I move things, when I hold shift and move my unregistered scans, those scans move together. So that's very helpful. Let's say these two were already aligned um, and I wanted to align both of them at the same time to scan one, I could just select them both at the same time there in the screen. All right. So at any point, if you want to undo something, you, well, you can just click the undo button up here in the top left like I just did. So let's look at actually moving this data around and, and aligning it. So I've selected scan two over here. I'm holding shift and I'm going to, I did move my rotation point. and I'm going to just line them up visually. Now when I'm picking points here, there's a, a couple different things I can do. Um, I wanna pick three common points in this scan data. So let's say his nose, one of these knuckles, and maybe a toe. 
Notice I didn't try picking a, a large flat or smooth area, like out in the middle of his stomach or something. Um, that could work, but you're going to be a whole lot less likely to actually be in the same spot if you don't have uh, something that comes to a point or, or a, a specific feature that you're clicking on. So that's why I like to pick stuff like I, like I did here with the toes, knuckles, and his, his nose. And they're, on, they're all on different planes and different areas. You kind of want to pick diverse spots uh, all over the model. And again, just three points is usually enough, three common points. So I've clicked, clicked my points there. If you're having trouble seeing um, either the texture points or geometry points that you need to click on, you can actually come up here to your view options and there's a couple different things you can do to make it easier to pick these points. This lighting button, if you have something that's really dark or you're just having trouble seeing geometry, or sorry, not geometry, but color texture uh, features that you were, you were planning on using to align, like maybe you drew some X's on an object or some numbers or something to help you line up a symmetrical object, then uh, sometimes it can be difficult to see those markings. Toggling this lighting option up here can help sometimes. Something else that helps, sometimes uh, your texture is really dark and you're not using it for alignment. You can come up here and change your view from texture to scan color and notice how that geometry got a lot easier to see. So that can help a lot. And then also with very noisy scans, a lot of times it can help to come in here um, and instead of a solid view, change it to points view. And it doesn't really help much on, on this scan, actually it might make it worse on this scan. Um, but it can help on very noisy uh, scan data. So just a couple things to keep in mind, a couple options to make your life easier when you're picking points, common points between uh, scans. Okay, so after I pick my common points here, there's a couple things I could do. This align markers button does exactly what it sounds like. It's not actually aligning the scans, but it's going to align the points that you clicked. So I could click align markers. And now my scans are close, but they're not actually aligned. Um, you could use that just to make sure that you clicked the right points before clicking the align button. Um, on this model, you know, it wasn't really a big deal. Um, it, it's an easy model. So I wasn't gonna get any points mixed up. Um, also, uh, maybe you're having trouble aligning the scans at all. Uh, you could click common points that you know should be really close, click align markers, and then you could try global registration. Uh, that's not really the recommended route, uh, honestly, but it does give you another option. Um, sometimes that could, that could work. Um, what's really recommended is if you're going through this manual process and you're just not getting enough, um, you're not able to pick common points or the common points you're picking just aren't working. You may not have enough data, you may not have enough um, geometry overlap. So what's uh, the, the best route there is probably to go back and, and scan again, add some more scan data, um, do, you know, just get a little more information so that you can align things properly. So that's align markers. In the little alignment section here, this align button will come in and align the object. And I just click that and it went pretty quickly with this. It's a very small scan, but it usually does work pretty quickly. Um, there is another option here, enable texture alignment. So honestly, the, you want to keep that off most of the time. Um, but where you will probably need to use that is any time where Anytime where you added texture, let's say X marks or, or you know, some sort of additional color data to your scan model in order for it to scan properly. Let's say you were scanning a sphere with very little geometry or, or a, a cylinder or something like that with uh, hardly any geometry uh, variation, something that's symmetrical uh, that, that, you know, the scanner would have trouble tracking across. Um, adding, of course, adding X marks or scribbles or something like that. You could add dots, whatever you want to do to the model will help with the tracking, but that also means that later on when you go to align, when you go to, um, 
run your uh, global registration and you know, some of your other algorithms, you'll have to run it with geometry plus texture, and that's what this does. When you click that, instead of just looking at common geometry, it's going to use the color data as well to help with the alignment. Um, most of the time, you probably want to keep that off unless you have, unless you have trouble with regular alignment because it does take longer and it can cause it to fail. Uh, only if you have bad texture, of course. Um, okay, and that's the manual alignment process. Or that's the standard rigid alignment. That's what we covered here, just this first tab. These other two tabs are more, uh, they're, they're, they're not as simple. They're more advanced, I guess you could say. They're more advanced ways of aligning things where if you really want to get into those, there is some really good information in the Artex Studio manual. Um, when you're done, make sure you click the apply button here at the bottom. And that's the manual alignment process within Artex Studio.